Hey everyone, Bill Heisinga here. Uh, literally just walked off the house floor uh, from the debt ceiling vote. I'm gonna give you the totals of you know, um, yes. my glasses and reflecting the long hair, but I uh, need to read the vote totals. Uh, so it was uh, 314 votes for the uh, for the bill, 117 votes uh, against. Um, 149 Republicans voted for it, 165 Democrats voted for it, 71 Republicans voted against it, and uh, 46 Democrats voted against it. Um, everybody in the Michigan delegation, Republican and Democrat, voted for it, with the exception of Rashida Tlaib. Uh, she was the only uh, no vote on that. Um, I put out a tweet earlier uh, this evening um, with, a, with a chart, uh, interestingly, showing uh, that this is only the second time that there has been a real spending cut with a debt uh, ceiling. Um, there's been a couple of flat, uh, uh, flat, uh, you know, no impacts, uh, but uh, the last was the uh, Budget Control Act back in 2011 when I first was here. Um, this is, uh, this is, don't get me wrong, this is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Not, uh, not what I would want to have seen. Uh, yet at the same time, there are some real positives that are in here, and I know there's uh, some angry face emojis, and, and get, I get it. Uh, I'm not real happy with uh, with all of the uh, all of the details. That's why the House uh, passed the Limit Save Grow Act, which was a um, massively overwhelming Republican bill that would have done far more to. Uh, to restrict spending um, and, and put other reforms in. We did get uh, some significant reforms in this. Um, and let me start with uh, this one. This is one that I think is huge. And for anyone who's been following me for any of the time I've been in Congress, um, you know how difficult and how much I hate continuing resolutions and these big massive Christmas tree omnibus bills uh, at the end of the year. It's ridiculous that uh, that we can't pass 12 uh, appropriations bills to keep government funded, and so, uh, and partially because of that place over there, the Senate, um, we've been bumping along with all these omnibus bills and continuing resolutions. It's a horrible way of operating our government. What's going to happen, thanks to Thomas Massey uh, and the work that he's put in and the work of some others is if we do not pass our appropriations bills in the House and the Senate, there is going to be a continuing resolution that has a 1% across the board cut. That is a real cut. Uh, that is uh, in all areas. And uh, that, uh, that is hopefully going to spur along everybody uh, to do their job. And uh, that is a far better way of doing uh, this process than continuing resolutions and omnibus bills and Christmas trees at the end of the year that get loaded up with every pet project and pet uh, you know, uh, funding uh, priority that, uh, that, that people have. And which, by the way, I'm, I'm the only member of the delegation who did not put in any, uh, uh, any appropriations requests uh, for, uh, for that. I take this stuff seriously. And um, so, one, having that Massey part of the equation is significant. We, the, the, the spending curve will happen one way or the other. Um, two, permit reform. Uh, there is a, uh, there's a federal, uh, federal program called NEPA uh, that, uh, that the EPA and others have all these environmental reviews. So just for context. In Canada, if you were trying to get a mine started, it would take two years to do an environmental review. In the United States, it's it's around eight years, four times as long. And as we're trying to decouple ourselves from China and other places around the world, we need to have rare earths available to us from our own country. Not in addition to that, then you've got uh, you've got uh, oil and gas and and other. Uh, other energy uh, sources that have not been uh, available, they've been locked up, and so uh, this is going to be a significant, uh, a significant improvement uh, on that as well. Um, I want to make sure I've got, uh, uh, got the, the, the figures right here, uh, but the, um, oh, the, uh, the, the, the work requirements, uh, if you are uh, on welfare, you are on assistance, SNAP, 
uh, which is uh, which is a food program, TANF, uh, which is another program. And by the way, states play the game of, uh, of uh, drawing down more federal dollars uh, by doing a little more spending. I was there, I witnessed it uh, when I was in the state legislature. Um, this is going to put in a work requirement if you are an able-bodied individual, not a, a head of a household with dependent children, not if you are disabled, if you are a fully uh, able working person, the gravy train's over. You have, to, uh, you have to either put in 20 hours of volunteering or 20 hours of education uh, to better yourself to make sure that you are prepared to be able to go back into the workforce. And I'm not sure what all the angry emojis are on the side about that. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to me because it would be better for people, for themselves and for our country, to be self-sufficient. So we need to push that. And, and just remember where we were starting from. We were starting from a, an administration, Biden administration, saying we're not negotiating at all. It's going to be a clean debt ceiling, no improvements on spending habits, no reforms on, on anything from permitting uh, to, uh, 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 you know, to welfare. Um, it's just going to be let the party continue. And again, while this is not a perfect uh, bill by any stretch of the imagination, this is a step in the right direction. It's a positive step. And I, I can tell you this, uh, uh, what, what the impact would be if we did default or partially default would be significant. And it'd be significant for all of us, you included. Your credit card fees and interest rates would go up. Your car loan interest rates would be going up. Your home loan interest rates would be going up. And there's already been enough pressure because of all the wild, sorry, just about cursed, uh, the wild spending that has been going on by by mainly one party here uh, in the years, the last couple of years, um, where that has caused inflation. And this would be an additional inflationary pressure because what would happen is uh, the our U.S. Treasury bonds would be viewed as even ris riskier investments. They would have to offer a higher uh, rate of return, uh, which means for every 1% in increase in interest rates on a government bond, that translates into $310 billion per year. $310 billion. That's cutting into everything else. So uh, if you, and I've had a few of you call, i had a few of you contact me, say, we just should default, we ought to let the country fail, we're failing enterprise, wrong. That would be the stupidest thing that we could possibly do. We need to continue to fight, but we cannot fall on our faces in the meantime. And, uh, and, and to add additional pressure on top of what has already been created by this Fed and by this administration would be the absolute wrong direction to go. So um, I'm not giving up the fight. Uh, we are going to continue to fight, and guess what? Uh, the appropriations process is going to be where that fight is going to, to, to take place. Um, and if, uh, if we cannot come to an agreement, uh, there's going to be an automatic 1% cut across the board. Uh, that is a uh, that is a certainly a real penalty for some folks in their mind. But just remember, I've been an original co-sponsor of a bill called the One Penny Plan uh, that would require every government agency to go and find one percent, one cent of savings for every dollar that they get. I think that would be very doable. I think that would be uh, helpful, uh, and it's realistic. But that that wasn't part of this. I would have liked to have seen a fiscal debt commission. I would have liked to see a fiscal state of the union. Uh, uh, happening every year. Uh, so those are things that we're not going to give up on. We're still fighting for and we'll continue to fight for. So uh, end of the night, for those of you that joined uh, joined, joined late, uh, I'm going to read through uh, the, the final uh, results on this again. Uh, there was um, uh, 314 votes total for the bill, 117 votes uh, against it. Uh, 71 Republicans voted no, 46 uh, Democrats voted no. And this is a wide range. Uh, you know, you had some. You had some on the Republican side. Uh, you had some uh, uh, military hawks who felt that this was too uh, detrimental to the military. Uh, you had uh, some others who uh, felt it didn't go far enough. On the Dem side, you had uh, uh, Jaya Paul, who was head of the uh, uh, Progressives. Uh, she thought this was too draconian, um, and and. Uh, others uh, along that uh, along that line and the the, uh, the simple fact is the vast majority of us 314 
believe that as imperfect as this bill is, um, it was a necessary step and, uh, and we needed to make sure that we were fiscally sound uh, as uh, temporarily while we are trying to fix the long-term issues because we are not fiscally sound, sound long-term. I fully acknowledge that and anybody who's been following me knows I've talked about that for a very long time and uh, we, need to, we need to continue that fight and so that's what I plan on doing. So thanks for joining me and we'll talk to you soon.